Hey guys, Will here. So we've had a pretty heavy focus recently on the channel, just around the build of this crazy sim rig that we've been working on for probably, I think, the best part of four months now. So we've had a pretty heavy focus on the screens, the traction loss system, the motion, and just generally really big, expensive things. So what I wanted to do today is kind of take a bit of a step back and just share with you five of the things that I'm appreciating and just loving the most on the sim rig at the moment. So without further ado, here's five of my favorite things. So these aren't gonna be in any particular order other than my number one one, which we'll start off with here, which is the Butt Kicker Gamer 2. So come down in here. Now, those of you who have been following this channel for quite some time now will remember my initial reaction when I first put this on the rig. At the time, I'd oh. never experienced a direct drive wheelbase. I'd never experienced any form of motion uh, simulation or anything like that. And just the, the impact of having this on the rig the very first time I drove it was so much more than I kind of anticipated. I had no idea what to expect and it really did blow me away. And this is something that I still continue, even, even though we've added all these other bits of motion and traction loss and all these other things, this is still the one thing that I miss the most when it's not turned on for some reason. So if you're wondering what this is, Butt Kicker Gamer 2, it's basically a uh, transducer, which is like a like a big bass speaker, like a subwoofer kind of thing. But essentially what it does is create vibrations that then transfer through the rig. And depending on where you mount it, will determine how it's actually gonna be implemented. We run it through uh, various different software packages. I use SimHub. And in that same video that we were just overlaying before, which I'll link down in the description below for you, I took you through some of the settings and things that you can do. So you can adjust it to, you know, give the impact of gear changes, kind of thudding through your back, uh, wheel slip, textures on the road, ripple strips, RPMs, uh, you know, engine vibrations, all those things. It really is a very, very versatile piece of equipment. And I would definitely say, you know, in terms of value for money when it comes to immersion, this is still my number one most recommended piece of equipment. It's not you know, super, super cheap, but when you compare it to the price of something like a seat mover or a full motion rig or a traction loss system, you know, absolute fraction of a cost of any of those things. And I honestly, you know, my opinion is still that this adds the same level of extra immersion to the overall sim racing experience as those things that are far more expensive do. So definitely a highly recommended piece of equipment there. And uh, we're actually gonna be doing some more experimenting with some transducers in the not too distant future as well, mounting them in different areas on the rig to try and simulate uh, you know, things like tire slip. So that's gonna be really interesting. And uh, Gamer Muscle actually did a really great video a couple of days ago, which I'll link down in the description below for you guys as well, where he actually mounted some little puck transducers behind his throttle and brake pedal to sort of simulate the feeling of ABS kicking in wheel slip. So uh, that was a really interesting video too, definitely check that out. But yeah, number one thing above all else is, and probably will always be the butt kicker and just trans transducer systems in general. I really do think that they're fantastic value for money. So next on the list is the Aolog Sequential Shifter. Now I reviewed this probably about six months ago now, and I've tested out quite a few different uh, handbrakes and shifters since then. And the shifter in particular is just something that I appreciate every single time I get in the rig. And I don't actually drive with it a whole heap, but just the value for money that this thing represents still blows my mind six months after I did the review. Every time I look at it, I kind of go, how do they make this thing so cheap? I feel like genuinely they could charge almost double the price for it and it would still probably sell. So it's got a really nice positive click to it that um, you know, it just, it just has this really nice mechanical expensive feel to it. And again, it just doesn't feel like something that costs what it does. So definitely one of the best value for money pieces of sim racing equipment I think I've ever reviewed here on the channel. So next on the list is the SimCore UM1 wheel mount. So we've got this with our SimuCube 2 Ultimate at the moment, but I actually have three of these now. I've got one for my Fnatic DD1 and DD2, and then Tom, who's behind the camera, actually has one of his, um, ha has one of these at his place as well on his Track Racer TR160 rig. So a couple of reasons why I love this, some as a general sim racer and some as a content creator. So first and foremost, it has absolutely, and I mean this genuinely, it has absolutely no flex in it whatsoever. I can pull on this thing you know, I'm not gonna break my wheel or anything, but I can push and pull on this as hard as I possibly can. And it genuinely does not move at all. And that's, you know, this is the only one that I've tested that has absolutely genuinely zero flex in it whatsoever. Another really great thing about it, uh, just from a general sim racers perspective as well, is the adjustability. I love that you can just undo the four bolts on the side here and it tilts 
and rotates through a pretty, and I can't remember off the top of my head now, but we do have a dedicated review on this where I gave you the uh, angles of rotation and everything. But you can very, very easily rotate this into the correct position, compatible with a wide range of different wheelbases as well. So as I said before, we've got this on the Semi Cube 2 Ultimate, but you can get one for the Fnatic DD wheelbases. Uh, they're working on one for the Sim Magic wheelbases at the moment too, I believe. So yeah, I just think it's fantastic from a sim racer's perspective, but also from a content creation perspective, this thing has proven to be extremely, uh, I guess, valuable in terms of the time that it saves me when I'm generating content too, because I have to swap and change wheelbases quite frequently here for making review videos. And I'm able to just undo the eight bolts, so four on either side, top and bottom, uh, undo those. And because it's sitting on these little blocks, I can literally just lift it straight out, swap the new one in, and it takes me probably less than three minutes to completely swap wheelbases, wire in the new uh, power supplies, and we're up and running again with a different wheelbase. So that has been a uh, massive improvement to the workflow here in the studio. So in terms of general content creation, as well as um, just sim racing in general, this is just something that I appreciate every single time I drive. Next on the list is our DIY wind simulator that we built probably about 18 months ago now. And we do have a link down in the description as well to the full DIY guide to build one of these yourself. I think it cost me probably a little bit under a hundred US dollars total to build this. Um, and yeah, look, it's been another one of those things kind of similar to the Butt Kicker Gamer 2. It's just added, a, I guess, a level of immersion to the sim racing experience that I wasn't really expecting when I built it. And you know, I was kind of skeptical as well, as a lot of you guys have been, uh, there's been quite a few comments sort of saying, you know, why would you need wind simulation in a closed cabin car where, you know, the wind's not blowing in your face anyway. Now, most closed cabin cars do have some sort of passive ventilation system anyway, so there is some natural air movement coming through the vents. But what this is all about, to me at least, is kind of just giving your brain cues, and it, it's kind of similar to motion systems in a way as well. It's about giving your brain cues that it kind of trick it into a deeper level of immersion, not necessarily doing it in a realistic way. So whether I'm driving formula style cars that are you know, open cabin or close GT style cabin cars, it's just something that it's, you know, I always find adds realism. And if for some reason it's become unplugged or I've forgotten to switch it on, forgotten to open Sim Hub, I notice it absolutely immediately. The second I roll out of the pits, I'm like, oh, the wind sim isn't on. And that's kind of been a bit of my gauge recently as we've added more and more stuff to the rig. If I, if I notice something is off immediately when I start driving, that's how I kind of know that it's something that is really valuable to the overall immersion level. Whereas if it's something that I can kind of drive for an hour or so and be like, oh, I forgot to turn this on, then I kind of know that it's not really doing all that much in the greater scheme of things. There are a couple of off-the-shelf solutions available for these as well. But again, in terms of immersion for dollar spent, this is definitely up the top of my list. Okay, so this one is more on the expensive side, but bear with me. This is the Cube Controls GTX wheel. Now, I reviewed this recently on the channel as well. I've been using it as, it's, I guess it's kind of become my go-to rim out of the probably 20 or 30 rims that we have here now in the studio. Uh, absolutely loving it for a lot of different reasons. Obviously, it looks really cool on the rig. The display is fantastic, and uh, you know it looks great in the videos as well. But the thing that I really love about it the most of all, which has probably surprised me a bit, is the actual rim itself. Now, they've recently made this available as a standalone accessory that you can buy, as well as an optional uh, rim that you can combine with their cheaper button boxes as well. But look, the ergonomics on this thing are absolutely fantastic, extremely comfortable to drive with. I've done hours upon hours of practice with this rim uh, for the Porsche Esports Super Cup All-Stars races recently. I haven't had any problems with blisters or anything like that. And I'm finding that it's actually more versatile than I thought as well. I've been using it for GT3, GT4, even F1 2020 I played for a little bit with it the other day. And yeah, I'm just finding it to be really, really comfortable. So if you're looking for a great sort of all-rounder rim for Formula and GT and, you know, GT3, GT4 style cars, pretty much anything but rally and drift, I would say, then this is actually a really, really good option. I think it comes in at about 150, 160 euros or something like that for the rim itself. So not super, super cheap, but when you compare it to a lot of the other genuine rims that are out there on the market, like, you know, your Momo rims, your Sparco rims and so forth, it is actually pretty well priced, I think, pretty fairly priced. So that is probably, yeah, the, the next thing that I enjoy the most out of everything 
on the sim rig at the moment. So I hope that this video has helped you guys out. I hope it's given you a bit of insight into, uh, yeah, some of the things that I'm appreciating every single day on the rig, and hopefully giving you some ideas for things that you can upgrade or look at upgrading on your own rig as well that are sort of outside a lot of the things that we've been looking at recently with super expensive screens, motion platforms, and things like that. So thank you very much for watching. Leave a thumbs up if you've enjoyed the video, and let me know down in the comments as well what you guys have been enjoying most on your sim rigs recently as well. Let me know what kind of gear you'd like to see more reviews on if you want to see more detail on any of the things that we've covered in today's video. And we'll see you again soon. Bye.